epidemics have disrupted society's well-being for centuries, causing loss of life, disrupting economic activity, and forcing families to make tough choices. The COVID-19 crisis is a vivid example of how such events can be harmful on a global scale. I am Karin Meimji. And I am Diego Gomez. We are economists at the IMF studying the links among epidemics, human capital, and economic development. Epidemics are drastic events that can affect human capital formation by forcing many kids out of school due to teachers and students' illness, school closures, and loss of family income. These negative effects may be particularly severe to developing economies, where children already face significant barriers to education, leading to absenteeism and early dropouts. Girls' education is particularly vulnerable during epidemics. Throughout the resulting economic crisis, many families with prioritize their boy education ahead of girls. Many girls have higher rates of early marriage and are at higher risk of unplanned pregnancy. Our goal is to understand the economic dimensions of this public health crisis. We start by asking the question, what are the likely impacts of epidemic events on school completion rates for primary and secondary education in developing countries? To answer this, we reviewed data covering 50 years of epidemic events in 57 countries. What we see in developing economies is a definite downward trend of school completion rates for boys and girls during and after epidemics. And for girls, the decline is definitely sharper. We find that after an epidemic episode, girls' primary education completion rate shrinks by three percentage points compared to two percentage points for boys. This is a tragedy for children in developing countries, but particularly for girls. Schools don't just prevent child labor. They also provide girls with precious safe space where they're generally protected from abuse and violence. Dropping school early compromises these children's ability to fully perform in the labor market when they grow up. After all, the formation of their human capital has been interrupted. This leads us to the second part of our study, in which we explore the potential long-term economic consequences of not completing primary and secondary education. Our results are staggering. To understand the value of education, we can take a look at Senegal. We find that women who had completed a secondary school education earn on average 80% more than those who only completed middle school. That's significantly higher than the rate for men, which is around 40%. In other words, women dropping out before completing secondary school suffer a far greater loss in potential earnings than men. This is well beyond a social issue. If these girls end less, they will contribute less to economic growth because their productivity will be lower. And they will also consume less. And then, a cycle forms whereby the world economy grows less, snowballing into a macro-critical crisis of overall productivity. That starts with this crisis of basic schooling. Let's go back to the current COVID-19 crisis. In many advanced economies, children have been able to continue schooling online. But schools and students in many low-income countries don't have that option. Schools closure due to COVID-19 were more widespread and longer than in recent epidemics. The good news is that governments have options to alleviate the current crisis learning from past epidemics. To the extent possible, governments should prioritize safe school reopening to foster inclusive growth. Governments can provide basic infrastructure provisions to educational institutions. Providing students with face masks, clean water, sanitary toilets, temperature checks, 
and sanitizers will help keep classroom COVID free. Governments can also create female-only spaces for girls to stay safe while schools are closed. But perhaps the most critical thing will be to end the pandemic. And for that, the economic future of these low-income countries really depends on a fair and equitable global distribution of vaccines. If we don't act now, the consequences of a loose generation of girls, students, and whole economies may be felt for years to come.